Hello, everyone. I'm Seth. And I figure skate. Or at least I used to. Here, let me show you a video of back when I used to figure skate. One jump. Actually, one combination jump. Was that jump impressive to you? See, people in the audience said yes. And I'm great, very, very grateful that you said yes. Unfortunately, you know what more experienced skaters would say? That jump is trash. I would use it for my warm up. And in fact, I had the same mindset too, to be honest. And that mindset of eternally being unsatisfied with the work that I did was what ultimately drove me out of the very same sport that taught me how to persevere through my hardest struggles. And maybe if I walk you through my entire journey, which led up to this moment, which was practically my final program before I quit, maybe you'll understand why. So it started in second grade. I decided that skating would be a curious endeavor it would be something cute, you know? Like little kids stepping onto the ice. But when I stepped onto the ice for the very first time, it wasn't cute. I fell. I fell straight on my face. I belly flopped. And when I tried to get back up again, I fell again. It was pretty embarrassing. Because as a second, as a second grader, you're taught that you're on top of the world. And you build up this ego. And that ego came crashing down as soon as I fell on the ice. It took other kids four or five tries before they got up and started waddling on their feet like penguins. But just to stumble to the other side of the ice, I took 33 falls. That is embarrassing. So a year later, I decided, you know what, I'm sick of falling. So I decided to enroll with a more advanced coach, a more experienced one who is experienced in teaching beginner level skaters like me, to more advanced level skaters like who I would soon become. And every day, I would return back to the same ice rink service. And he was a great coach. I learned extremely efficiently through him. But unfortunately, I learned so well that he had an expectation that I would learn things in a week that took others months to master. And while that worked for some things, learning is, of course, a nonlinear path. There are bumps in the road. And whenever I would encounter one of those bumps, he would just yell at me and tell me that I wasn't doing good enough. Obviously, that was not a healthy environment to be in. So I decided to leave for a better team, one that trained Olympic gold medalists. If you look at any world champion, or any Olympic gold medalist that represented the United States, that team that I joined probably trained them. And I assumed that if I joined that team, they would nurture me healthily to success. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Because for every Olympic gold champion that was there, 30 more broken students left that team. And unfortunately, I was one of them. Something needed to change, so I decided to enroll with arguably the best coach aside from that team. And he was practically a one-man army. I mean, sure, he taught all the jumps that I needed, all the spins that I've ever dreamt of and seen on TV. He taught all my skating skills. He taught me how to not skate like a football player, and, but skate with class. That's something incredible, considering how clumsy I am. But the thing that stood out to me was that he was kind. He was honest, he was caring, and no matter how dry my humor was, he would always match it equally and find a way to lightly point out my faults while always encouraging me to try again. But what I didn't tell you about our esteemed coach was that he was very far away. So we couldn't continue seeing him anymore after the drive time and the lesson time and waking up early took a toll on our mental health. So unfortunately, we had to leave. 
But what could I do about my competitive skating career? Every time I was inching so close towards greatness, I would always fall short. And so I spiraled. All around me, I saw skaters who were far more successful than me, and they were happier too. And when I looked around me, all I could do was spiral downwards. And so I did. Down, down, and down I went. When I returned back to skating after taking a short break, I didn't really care about how well I skated, to be frank with you. I fell on a jump and I laid on the ice. I fell on a spin and I just spun around there and I sat there contemplating whether it was worthy to get up again, whether it was worth it, whether it was worth it for my mental health to get back up again. Because you see, I lost all of my techniques, my jumps, my spins, and my skating skills that I worked years for. And I also lost my pride and my identity as a person too. And that's pretty damaging for a young kid, don't you think? Well, you know, I couldn't stay like this forever. I mean, like, I wouldn't be here today if I just sat there sopping like some wet blob. And so like a phoenix, I decided to rise out of the ashes and try skating one more time. I mean, skating itself is a good sport, so there's bound to be something good out there, right? Well, I decided to join an ice theater team, one that focused more on performative arts and more importantly, having a good time and fostering growths and connections rather than military drills and training. And you know what the result of that was? Something beautiful happened. Because we got the opportunity to compete in a national level tournament and we got second. And then we competed in another one and we got second again. Isn't that crazy? Because when you actually nurture someone and notice their suffering, amazing things can happen. This jacket right here that I'm wearing right now is a jacket from US figure skating. I went to compete at an international level competition with my team. And even though we didn't win, I think it was a win in my book because those memories that I made with my teammates were some of the core experiences and most treasured ones that I've had during my 16 years of living. Junior year was coming up soon, so I decided that skating would be a bit too much. So I decided to focus on school instead. But unfortunately, I see people all around me that suffer the same fate that I did back in my early days of skating. You see, they care about these report cards, these A pluses, these GPAs, these 4.0s, these 5.0s. They take so many extracurriculars and so many clubs that it's staggering to even imagine how they push themselves to the limit. They stretch themselves so thin that you can see the insanity within them. And you know what? I think that they know it's going to be worth it in the end because no one would torture themselves like this for fun, right? Everyone who does this coursework has a purpose. They have a purpose to lead the world and make it a better place. And I feel like what we can do is we can notice their suffering and we can give them a hug and we can ask them how they're doing and we can nurture them by saying, is there anything I can do for you? And as a student who's struggling through the same things, please, I ardently beg you, please notice our suffering. Thank you.